Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive, Daniel here. Alright, if you're like me, you might have spent a lot of time growing up drawing dungeons and bases on paper with your friends. And most of the time this wasn't really a game, but we would sometimes make them into games. Uh, one game we would play, I remember at school, is we would take a piece of paper and we would draw kind of like a, a landscape on the page and then draw some bases. These bases would usually have some kinds of like guns pointing out or maybe you would draw a few little stick figures as people. And then your opponent would also draw a landscape and would draw the same number of uh, people and bases on their side. And then what you would do is, is you would take your pencil and you would attach it to one of the guns and then do something like that which would create like a trajectory and then you would follow that up to the other side of the base and it would blow up your opponent's landscape and you would try to hit their guns or something like that um you could also do it to where you would try to position a shot so you would draw something like dark like that and then you would fold the paper over and then find that spot and transfer it to the page. And then that spot would be the spot that it blew up at. And it was fun. The drawings for this type of game weren't very intricate because things were getting destroyed all the time. So it, the purpose of this exercise was not in the drawing, but in the game. And then of course we would always draw our bases where you would have land here and you would go down and and different kinds of uh, buildings would be built underground with different purposes like factories that you would make your make your weapons it was always it was always war of course but um you know, mainly like science fiction type stuff but uh these types of exercises here are where the drawings would get more intricate because it wasn't about destroying, it was about creating and kind of, you know, telling, telling a story of your base while you were drawing it. Well, as time progressed, people have come up with ways to uh, make games out of those activities that we used to play as, as kids. And one of the first that I know of, and there's probably others well before this, but, um, was how to host a dungeon a solo game of dungeon creation by tony dowler uh, this is a really really neat game and this kind of goes through the whole geography and ecology and the environment of a underground uh, dungeon and underground dwelling throughout millennia throughout the history of time from when it was first formed by the geographical anomalies and by volcanoes and earthquakes. And then you have where the, the first civilizations come in and they build and then they fall and then other civilizations come in and build upon those civilizations. And then you have uh, different kinds of races come in, dwarves and elves and goblins. And soon, you know, civilizations are built up underground, treasure is built up, secrets are, cre are, are created and lost throughout time. And then the adventurers come in and they try to uncover what is going on. You have an age of monsters, surface kingdoms build up on the surface and maybe start to dig down and rediscover these lost civilizations that are underground. And so this is a really interesting cool little game about building up a world it reminds me a lot of microscope in that sense uh, that the um kind of uh hippie crusty or crusty hippie rpg game <laughs> those are sometimes called which is a, a really fun world building exercise that is also a game but it can also be used you know if you just want to sit around with some friends and tell a neat story Another game like that is uh, The Quiet Year, which I still need to do a video on. Well, recently I backed on Kickstarter a few new games that are in this kind of um, draw, create genre of game. 
And those are Delve, a solo map making game, Rise, a game of spreading evil, and Umbra, which is kind of like a science fiction version. And all three of these games are from and created by Anna Blackwell. And these are really neat little games, little zine games, very indie. Um, Delve, you are a race of dwarves and you are building your dwarven stronghold underground, exploring the caverns and discovering what you find and building buildings. In Rise, you are a... Rise is pretty much like your Dungeon Keeper style of game where you have your dungeon heart and you are an evil overlord in the dungeon and so you are building up your dungeon. And Umbra, or Umbra, maybe Umbra, is kind of like the, the, the colony in Aliens. You are colonists on a hostile planet and you are building your colonies and your forts trying to protect yourselves from an alien invasion. So the one that I'm focusing on right now is Delve, and I'm actually playing that. And Delve says, Delve, a solo game of digging too deep, is a solo tactical drawing game that puts you in control of a dwarven hold as you dig deep into the world. Along the way, you'll draw a unique stronghold with the rooms you build and locales you discover. But the world isn't quiet beneath the ground, and you will be forced to defend yourself in lightweight tactical combat. Delve is, a, is great for world building and creating organic feeling locales for your RPG or novel. And it's a, it's a neat little game. I'm having a lot of fun. I just started playing it this morning. So I have my first layer of my Dwarven Keep built here. And we have our entrance, so this is the surface up here. I have numbered my columns uh, one through nine, and then my layers as you go deeper, I have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. But this is my entrance at the surface. You're coming down, stairs split into two here. It's a, it's a side view of a, of a dwarven uh, underground dwarven keep. Here we have some barracks with some um, dorms attached. So I have some, some uh, soldiers that are able to access the surface area. I also have some soldiers stationed at the stairwell to protect because we don't want any of the uh, creatures leaving. And then this way, if you go past the barracks and the dorms, you come to a stairwell that's going to lead down to the lower uh, layer. And over here, I discovered a lava river. And right now, this is just kind of running off the page, but I have a feeling eventually I'm going to have this kind of come back into the dungeon and do something interesting. Here we have my office as the overseer, and that's me sitting behind the desk with a big helmet on. I built my office here because the office, any um, build, any room that you explore in the same column as your office, will give you additional uh, a certain type of resource as long as it's used to generate that resource. Now, um, past the office here, I discovered a hive of creatures. And what I decided to do was I decided to make these creatures, these tiny little insectoid creatures that are living in these hives. And we came to a truce with them where I would not disturb the um, any of the cavern spaces around their um, their main hive, and then we wouldn't have to fight. So we're living in peace right now. And then in turn, they decided to teach me a way of magical healing, of mending, of using their like saliva as a way to mend wounds. And so my dwarven mages, they built a library of healing over here where they are working with the insectoid people to research new ways of healing and then there's a stairwell going down here and on the second layer what I'm going to try to do is I want to build an inn because you can build an inn to attract adventurers. I want to build a hospital attached to my library so the um, healing powers of the hospital become greater now because um, this magical library allowed me to to research healing spells 
and then I also want to build a forge so I can start building traps and that kind of stuff and defenses in order to protect uh, all of my, my buildings. And so the way the game is played is it's, it's pretty simple, but there are um, some pretty cool choices to be made. It is not a fast paced game. This is a very slow kind of relaxing activity game. It's fun to just put on a podcast or I was listening to some dungeon synth this morning while I was playing it. But you're basically going to take a deck of cards without the jokers. I have this really nice um, Shadow Masters bicycle deck. I love this deck. It's it's super cool. It's super metal. But um, And you're going to give that a shuffle. And then the turn order is pretty simple. The only thing you need to play, a pencil and eraser, one inch grid paper, or you don't need to use grid paper, notepad, a deck of standard playing cards, and a bunch of tokens. And I'm using these. I've got these uh, wooden tokens for anything that I might need to use while I'm playing this game. But the turn sequence is you're going to pick one of the squares to say you're going to explore. So let's say I was down on the second level and I wanted to explore this um, section here. I would draw a card and this would be the six of hearts. So hearts and diamonds are your resources. And anytime you uh, draw a heart, you get a certain number of uh, resources. Anytime you draw a diamond, you get a certain number of goods. So resources, depending on the depth, or um, diamonds, depending on the depth, you get more, but hearts, you don't. So I drew um, this as a resource, so I would add that to my uh, resources. And here I have my resources and my trade goods. I'm keeping track of the number of units that I've recruited. And I'm also keeping track of any discoveries I've made. So like those insect people and how they have taught me some um, some magic. So hearts and diamonds are basically how you're going to be um, building up your resources so you can build buildings and so you can um, build different kinds of traps and barriers and hire uh, recruit soldiers and that kind of thing. Um, your spades here, your spades are going to be uh, what is called, um, what do they call that? So spades are pretty much hostile things that you're going to discover. Uh, remnants, remnants, that's what it's called. And so you have your remnants here and you would look at the number that you drew. So a nine of spades, I would have discovered a demon portal. Roll a d4 at the end of the turn on a one, spawn demons with 20 strength. Uh, to destroy the portal, you would have to pay 20 uh, trade goods and sacrifice one of your clerics killing them so you would have to have a cleric in order to uh, destroy that demon portal and every turn you would have to roll a d4 or you could draw a card and use the suits to uh, roll a d4 as told there in that legend and so then if that was the case if i had found a demon hole a, a demon portal i would draw a little demon portal there and that would be in that space and then clubs are natural formations that you are going to find, like different kinds of underground rivers and forests and that kind of thing. And here we have our natural formations. So if I drew a king of clubs, I would have discovered a burrowing beast digs a, a tunnel straight up from this space. When it reaches one of your rooms, combat starts and it moves normally towards the entrance, can be tamed, does not burrow. So if I found that creature there, that would be really bad because he would go straight up to your staircase. Now he would have a strength of 20, it said, and combat's pretty simple. When you discover something a hostile, it's gonna be uh, marked on your map with a token and every turn it's gonna move one space and it's gonna try to get up and escape. And then you have to move your um, soldier. So if I had uh, a certain number of soldiers there, I would have to move to intercept it. And then a simple battle takes place where you just compare strengths. Whoever has the highest wins and the uh, you both lose a certain number depending on what your strength is. So pretty simple, uh, but quite a bit of fun. It is really fun drawing this kind of stuff. I've had a good time 
uh, drawing the little details. I would like to use a bigger paper the next time I play just so I could have more room for more details. But there are all kinds of buildings you can build too. So each turn you can either build a stairwell going down, you can build a corridor that connects two spaces. You can also later on develop the technology to build secret passages that can connect different places. There are all kinds of different rooms you can build. Barracks, a cannon outpost, a forge, a mason, an inn, a kennel. A kennel is what you uh, build if you want to tame the wild beasts that you discover. You can build dorms and hospitals, kitchens, museums, shrines, treasuries, drawbridges, pumps, elevators, um, inventor's lab, a breeder. You can, once you get forges and certain other buildings, you can start developing traps and barricades. You can make defensive barricades or offensive barricades, secret passages, and then here we have our natural uh, form formations, our remnants. These are the different adventurers that can come. So once you build an inn, you can draw a card and look at five. And then um, if you have an inn, the shield bearer will take up residency in your inn. He has 100 strength, he or she. And the shield bearer is treated as a defensive barricade, except it can move as if it were a normal unit. Does not block line of sight of units with ranged. Different kinds of adventures you can find. You can stumble upon magical objects and magical like relics or natural magical formations that produce good magic. Some might produce a bad magic that you have to deal with. And then once you get a certain level down, a certain number of layers down, you start to come into the more weird areas. And ultimately what you're trying to find is, what do they call it? A, a void crystal, I think. You're trying to locate the void crystal. And that is kind of how you win the game. And you want to do that before any of the creatures, uh, you know, destroy your buildings and escape to the surface. There are inventions you can build, these kinds of legendary finds that you can find, uh, magical relics, ancient monsters that you can encounter. And then the back of the book comes with ways to make the game a little harder, such as ways to have the different layers have each one has its own kind of uh, rule set that adds another layer of complexity. Um, and then it also has some different runes that you can discover and then some challenges that you can uh, use to kind of like set your achievements for yourself. So yeah, it's a, it's a fun little game. It's a fun little exercise. Um, I'm not super into the gaming of like the combat. I kind of want to just use this to draw a fun little dungeon and... Um, kind of come up with this story, the history of my Dwarven Keep. And all kinds of games like this, it's always a good opportunity to bring out books like the Ultimate Traps Collection. So once I start building traps, you know, then you can start looking in books like this to, uh, to get inspired by some of the uh, crazy traps. This book from Goodman Games is absolutely brilliant. It is so it is so much fun. I need to do a whole video just on this book alone, going through and detailing some of my uh, favorite traps. A lot of these are more like personal traps where you're gonna attack personal heroes, but some of them are more like room style traps and, uh, and all kinds of fun, nasty things that happen. And then of course, you can always bring out your table fables. Uh, these are always fun if you're just kind of like want to roll on a random table to try to uh, come up with a neat story prompt. And then we've already looked at the dungeon alphabet. The dungeon alphabet along with delve and uh, rise is a lot of fun. So really like all three of these are kind of a variation on a theme. Uh, there, there are some differences in the way the games are played, but they're, mo they're, they're mostly pretty similar. But um, I don't mind having all three. And of course, yeah, so just using the dungeon alphabet. And then this book is also a lot of fun. And a good inspiration for Delve is the Book of Layers. This is for D&D uh, &D 5e. But this just has all kinds of different different monster layers and little, little one-room dungeons and some more complex dungeons with different enemies, 
and different things to find and just different ways to inspire uh, my creativity as I'm playing these kinds of uh, writing, creative drawing games. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. Like I said, just really relaxing. I wish that there was more art in these books. I would love to see a couple examples that Anna created, like maybe in the back if it had. What I think would be really cool is if she would have put in the back of the book like a full game that she played with her final uh, Dwarven Fortress, Dwarven Hold, and then her notebook detailing what she discovered while she was playing. I think that would be really neat because I would like to read about what other people have done while they're playing. And like the few pieces of art in here are awesome. I mean, I would love to be able to draw, <laughs> draw like that. That is some really neat detail in their uh, Dwarven stronghold there. But yeah, a lot of fun. If you're looking for just a nice little relaxing thing to do, uh, maybe, you know, when you take a break from work or after a busy week of work, you know, something nice to do on a Saturday morning. Uh, look into these little uh, indie games. They're, they're, they are a lot of fun and um, I am enjoying it a great deal. So, all right guys, well, I just wanted to bring attention to this. Again, that's Delve, a solo map, map drawing game, Umbra and Rise, a game of spreading evil, all from Anna Blackwell. So take it easy guys, we'll talk to you later, bye-bye.